Hello kids, so today what we're going to do is we're going to continue solving our proportions, but we're going to introduce the concept of what we call an extraneous solution. What I want to make sure you do is that you have a colored pencil of some color other than what you're going to take notes in, so that for the two examples we do, you can write some little notes beside them. That'll be helpful because you're going to be needing to use your notes while you work on the homework because I won't be able to walk around and help you. So we've got fairly short notes because what we're going to do is two examples really slow and write really detailed notes and then we'll go to the worksheet. So we are solving proportions and remember what that means. Just a little review here off to the side. Remember we say that two things are in proportion if their ratios of corresponding parts are equal. And once they are equal, we know that when we multiply along the diagonal, 1 times 6 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, it's always the same. So what that allows us to do and what we have been doing is we've been using that to find missing parts of a proportion. And we started with just some easy ones where we just said, well, if these are truly in proportion, if they are truly equal, then when I multiply x times 13, it has to equal 3 times 11, or 33, and we solved. And then we introduced ones that resulted in solving quadratics, but the process was the same. And today, the process is going to stay exactly the same. The only difference is, is we're going to have to check for what we call extraneous solutions. And what an extraneous solution is, is it's a solution that falls out algebraically. So what happens is you do all your proper algebra steps and you get an answer. And the answer seems like a good answer because you followed all the rules and you got it. But it falls out algebraically, but when you test it, or when you check it, it doesn't work. But let me talk about what makes a solution not work. There are really only a few things in math that are illegal. One of them is that we're not allowed to write negative numbers. So anytime we get a solution to something and it causes us to write a negative, we call it extraneous. The other situation, and it's one we've talked about here before, is when we're dealing with fractions, remember that we're never allowed to divide by zero. So an extraneous solution is one that would make us divide by zero. So we plug it in, and what it means is it doesn't work because we end up in today's situation, because we aren't dealing with square roots, we end up dividing by zero. So let me talk about, just to look ahead at what's going to happen. We're going to solve this. We're going to solve it how we were solving yesterday. We might get one or two solutions. We're going to check them both. And what happens is if they make us divide by zero, we say it, it's out because it, it, it's an extraneous solution. So let's talk about what might be an extraneous solution for us. What causes us to divide by zero on this first fraction? Well, if x plus 5 is zero, it means that x would be a negative 5. So kind of look ahead at what's going to happen. I'm going to solve this problem exactly as I was solving yesterday. But if negative 5 is one of my solutions, I'm going to have to throw it out because I am not allowed to divide by 0. So let's go about this really slowly. And I want you to have that colored pencil out. If you didn't grab one, you should grab one right now. Move this one a little bit out of the way here. So let's solve this proportion. I am in search of what's x in this problem so that these two ratios or fractions are equal. So what we do is we start them the way we've been starting them for the last couple of days. They've just gotten progressively more difficult. I simply multiply 6 times x plus 5, and I set it equal to the other cross product, which would be x plus 3 times x plus 5. 
So in your colored pencil, what I'd like you to do is right off to the side, just so you know what we're doing, so if you get stuck on the homework, our first step on one like this is to set the cross products, but let's just say the diagonals, when you multiply, equal. So what I'm doing is multiplying on diagonal number one, multiplying on diagonal number two, and I'm setting them equal. Now I'm going to follow all my rules of linear and exponential algebra. And the first one is that when I have a number of parentheses, I distribute it in. So what I'd like you to do is with your colored pencil, just you know what we're doing, right, distribute on that. So 6 times x is 6x, and 6 times 5 is 30. But it's only 30 on Fridays. Just kidding. It's always 30. Next side up. How do I multiply two binomials? Got my favorite four-letter word that starts with an F, foil. All right, so write that in there with your colored pencil. Actually, I'm going to write this in my original one just to keep things color-coded right here. So I'm going to foil this side. I've got first times first. X times X is always X squared and never twice X. I do firsts first, then I go to the outside and I multiply those and I get a 5X. Then I go to the inside and I multiply those and I get a 3X. And then I go to my last terms and I multiply those and I get a 15. At this point, bracket this and with your colored pencil, write combine like terms. All right, so I'm going to get all everything cleaned up here. I have 6x plus 30. That has to equal x squared plus 8x plus 15. I now have what's called a quadratic equation. How do I know that? I'm going to point a little arrow at it because I've got my highest power is a 2. So I've got an x squared in this problem. It's a quadratic equation, so that means I've got to watch out. That's a set of eyeballs. I've got to be careful because a quadratic equation is solved very different than a linear equation. Remember, right here, we need to get one side equal to zero. And it's important which one, so listen carefully. Wake up! Put your phones away! Listen up! There's no coming back and saying, I didn't know how to do it, because I'm playing this, and I'm doing it really slowly, and I'm telling you everything you need to do, plus, I'm going to upload it to Edmodo so you can watch it again for your viewing pleasure this weekend if you get stuck. All right, so I need to get one side equal to zero. It's important to know which side because it really does matter. You want to make sure that whatever that x squared term is, you want it to stay positive. So you want the x squared term positive. All right, so what that means for this one is I would like, because it's already positive, I want to keep it over there on the right. So I'm going to get zero over here on the left. How do I do that? I do the opposite. To get rid of 6x, I subtract 6x from both sides, line it up with its like term. To get rid of a 30 that's being added, I subtract 30 from both sides, line it up under its like term. My resulting equation, which needs to be solved, is over here on the left. I've got nothing. I've got 6x minus 6x, 30 minus 30. I've got the zero that's necessary. Over on the right, I have no like terms. The x squared's a loner. But I've got 8x's, and I'm removing 6 of them, so I'm down to 2x's. Likewise, I had 15, and I'm going down 30, so I'm at down 15. Now I've got a nice quadratic equation. Remember, to solve that, so in your color, again, for the steps, you know what to do. I need to solve that by factoring. Actually, if it didn't factor, I'd solve it using the quadratic formula, but we won't be that cruel to you today. You are going to solve by factoring, so you need to remember all your different kinds of factoring. This is a nice, easy, unfoiling kind of factoring where I am going to choose 5 and 3 with the 5 being negative. So we've got 0 is equal to x minus 5 times x plus 3. 
You might want to double check that, foil it out, make sure it works. Last, I need to solve it by factoring. So I need to decide what truly makes this equal to zero. And notice I get two solutions. It's zero when x is equal to, sorry, that should have been a plus. I got a sign error going here. Pardon me, pardon me. 8 minus 6 is positive 2. All the road. And I'm not going to restart the video here. So we're going to go fix. Everybody stop. Fix. Train wreck. Ah! All right, there we go. Anyway, so I've got two solutions here. I've got x is equal to negative 5, because negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Or it could equal 3. It's at this point where you need to number 4, check them in the original. And if they cause you to divide by 0, you got to toss it out. So I'm going to travel all the way back up. And I don't need to do a whole lot of plugging in. I'm traveling up here. I'm going to my original problem. I'm going to go through here. And I'm going to stick that negative 5 in. And you'll notice that it gives me a 0 on bottom. Illegal. Toss it out. I do the same with the 3. But when I put the 3 in, I get an 8 and an 8. That means 3 is my one viable solution. So today, we're working with what I call extraneous solutions. What I'd like you to do with this next one, because we're only going to do one more, I would like you to take this next one, and because there's not a whole lot of room, flip it over, and on the back of your packet, it's a whole blank sheet, and I'd like you to rewrite it. So take a minute while I'm um, cloning this sucker, and then I'm going to cut it out, and then I'm going to put it on a clean sheet of paper here. And what I'd like you to do to get a clean sheet, is rewrite that on the back, just so that we've got a lot more room for explanation, because we are only doing these two today. All right, so we're going to follow the steps we wrote on the other page. We are checking our solutions to make sure that they are not extraneous. What does that mean? We've got to make sure we can't divide by zero. If it results in that, we mix it out. Are you ready? Wait up. Put your phones away. All right, here we go. First of all, number one, what do we do to solve any proportion at any time, no matter how difficult they are? We set the cross products equal. So we say x minus 4 times x minus 2 has to be equal to the product on the other diagonal. The means equal the extremes. Negative 2 times x squared minus 4. The left-hand side in your other color, write yourself a little note, that needs to get foiled. The right-hand side needs to get distributed. Let's go do that. Foiling stands for first. You should be good at it. Outside. Inside. Last. Negative times negative makes a positive. On the other side, negative 2 is getting dumped in. Negative 2 times x squared. Negative times a negative makes a positive. I now have what's called a quadratic. I need to get that quadratic equal to 0. I need to move things. So now I've got to decide which side I'm going to move. Remember what I said. Keep your eyes out here. We want the x squared term to be positive. Note, don't write this down. What did I just say? I didn't hear you. Don't write this down. What did I just say? Excellent. All right. Do not do this. Here's why. That will give me, get rid of them over on the left. But I'm going to have the negative on the right. And the factoring is really difficult if your x squared term is negative. It's a lot easier if you keep it positive. It doesn't mean it won't work. It just means it's going to be more work for you. So we want to make sure our x squareds are positive, which means we're going to add x squared to both sides, 2x squared. Make sure you line it up with its like term. We also are going to get rid of that 8. It's plus 8. We do the opposite. So we subtract it. We're going to line it up with its like term. So notice what I've got. Over on the right, I got nothing. I don't want anything. I want a 0. Over on the left, I have x squared plus 2x squared, which is 3x squared. These like terms need to be combined for a minus 6x. I'm not messing with that because there weren't any over on the other side, so it's locked in. And then 8 minus 8, gone. So I'm left with this. And what do I need to do with it? Point at it with whatever other color you're using. I should hear the clicking and clacking of colored pencils being put down. I need to factor it. It's a different kind of factoring than the last time. How do I factor this? 
I say, is there anything that I can pull out? And the answer is yes. That's always the first thing that goes through your head. And if the answer is yes, you do it. I pull out 3x, which is going to leave 3x times x minus 2. That equals 0. Now what I've got here is two things that multiply to equal 0. I need to solve it. 3 times what gives you 0? 3 times what gives you 0? The answer isn't negative 3. It's 0. There's one of the answers. x minus 2 equals 0 when x is 2. So I've got two answers right here. Maybe both are good. Maybe neither is good. Maybe one's good. It needs checking. How do I check it? You don't need to do a full check where you're plugging it in. You really just need to make sure that you don't divide by 0. So you travel up here to the top again and weave around, and I'm going to plug a 0 in and make sure I don't get a 0 on the bottom. When I plug a 0 in, I get 0 squared minus 4. It's fine. It's negative 4. Over here on this side, I get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. Also fine. Then I do the same thing with the 2. It travels up. And it gets dumped into the bottom. And I say 2 squared is 4 minus 4 is 0. The minute I do that, I know that 2 is what we call an extraneous solution because there's no division allowed by 0. So my answer is 0. Yay! And we're done. So your assignment, you are going to get a yellow worksheet. And it's going to cover the next couple of days. So your assignment is actually to do 1 through 8. What I'm going to do is, you're going to work on that. The sub's going to pause this video um, for, oh, I don't know, a good 15 minutes. Uh, we'll just have you stop. And what I then would like is for the sub to play the video again when I do number, I think I'll do number four for you. All right, so I'll give you about, they take a while, so maybe about 15 minutes, five minutes for each of those first three. And then um, have this uh, substitute will play number four for you also. So please, whoever the substitute is, please pause this video and start it again in 15 minutes. And feel free to go past number four. So um, here we are. I am back. Number four. x plus 2 over x plus 4 equals x minus 2 over x minus 1. Let's begin. I'm solving a proportion set the cross products equal. X, and you should have already done this one, so you're just checking yours. x plus 2 times x minus 1 has got to be in balance or in proportion with x minus 2 times x plus 4. And multiplication, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. So if you wrote x plus 4 times x minus 2, you're going to be just fine. Next step, I need to actually multiply those. This is foiling. Firsts, outsides, insides. Lasts. Multiply, 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 multiply. On the other side, firsts, outsides, insides, and multiply for the lasts. Next, I'm going to combine my like terms, get everything all set and ready to go. I've got x squared. I've got plus 1x. I've got minus 2. I've got x squared. I've got plus 2x. I've got minus 8. What do I do next? I need to get one side equal to zero. I need to move x squareds over. I want to avoid getting a negative. Well, this is interesting because on both of these, if I subtract x squared, it gives me nothing on either side. That's fine. I'm just going to get rid of it. So what happens is I'm going to choose to subtract x squared from the left, subtract x squared from the right. Let's even write down what that next level, the x squareds are gone. And I just get 1x, which so is x minus 2 is equal to 2x minus 8. How do I solve that? This is linear algebra. I don't have a quadratic equation anymore. I'm just going to attack x by, again, getting that off of there. Let's do it one step at a time. I'll get negative 2 is equal to x minus 8. Now what? Attack x. No factoring necessary. Nice linear equation going on here. I end up with one answer. The answer is 6. I'm going to go check it and see if 6 is okay. Does 6 work up here? If I put it in, I have a 10 on the bottom. On this one, if I put it in, I have a 5 on the bottom. 
well, let's do a full check on it. It's not extraneous because it's not making me divide by zero, but let's just prove to you that it actually does work. Let's really put it in on the top. On the top, I'd have 6 plus 2, which is 8, over 6 plus 4, which is 10. On the other side, I'd have 6 minus 2, which is 4, over 6 minus 1, which is 5. Are these truly proportional and truly equal? They sure are. 8 tenths reduces to 4 fifths, or you could look at the cross products, they're both 40. But 6 is a fantastic solution. There are no extraneous solutions to this problem. Uh, keep in mind, although I taught you about extraneous solutions, it doesn't mean there always is one. You actually have to test for them. And we are done. On Monday, what is due is 1 through 8. So um, what I'll do is I'll walk around, make sure those are done. And then on Monday, we'll be in groups, working on the back of it. You guys have a fantastic weekend. Adios.